The film story begins with a woman named Meg who is about to get divorced soon so she was looking for a new house with her son because now she will be separated from her husband. So they can't live together, today she had seen many houses which she did not like. The dealer shows her a great house of a rich man which had all kinds of facilities but because that rich man had died so his family had put up this house to sell in a lesser amount. As the mother and daughter went inside, they liked the house a lot and decided to buy this house. Meg liked everything in the house but when the dealer took her to the third floor, Meg starts thinking by seeing one thing there. Actually, there was a strange room like a bunker which we can also call a safe room or a locker room means it is used to hide something. Now Meg asks the dealer for what purpose the owner of the house has made this room. The dealer replies that when the owner of the house used to live here, he had a lot of money, approximately several million dollars. That's why he made this locker room so that if ever there was any danger he could use it in case of emergency. And if there was an attack on him, he could come here and save his life. They now come inside and check this room too, there were a lot of TVs installed because there were cameras in the whole house whose recordings are played here. In addition to this, iron walls were also used inside the wall, such rods along with current were installed on the gate so that if anyone tries to enter it, he will die due to the current. Now here one thing that was most interesting was the phone that will never shut down, it will always on but there was a small thing that it had not started running yet and to get it started the company should be informed who set up the phone here. Meg obviously found this room quite strange but it does not matter to her because she had to live in this house which was so luxurious, not in this room. That's why she pays and buys a house, soon she shifts her stuff and starts living here and so her life begins to run normally. The mother and son were happily living here. A few days later, at night, we see thieves outside and peeping inside their house when they were sleeping meanwhile, one man forcibly tries to open the door but due to being locked from inside, he could not open the door. So now he somehow started climbing up and entering through the window, he first opens the balcony door then moves inside and opens the main door and invites his other companions inside. One of their companion thief named Burnham sees Meg and her son. Now he was a good person compared to the other thieves and had refused to steal earlier. But when he was told that there was no one at home then he agreed to steal. Now because he had seen the mother and son that's why he tells one of his companions that he will not steal here because a family is living here whereas you had said that the house is empty. I am not going to steal by killing people like this. Now here we came to know that the thief to whom Burnham was telling all this was actually the grandson of the old owner of the house. He knew that the house was empty earlier that's why he had made this entire plan of theft. But now when he came to know that there is someone at home, he convinces Burnham to calm down. Nothing will happen, I have arranged everything, I have also brought a killer to get them killed who takes money and kills people so he will put those mother and son to sleep and we will commit our robbery. Don't think so much, nothing will happen but still, Burnham does not agree for this and decides to leave because he did not agree to take someone's life. Seeing him leaving, the grandson of the owner of the house starts cursing him what stupidity are you doing? Don't you want money? You have no idea that here we will get more than 3 million dollars, hearing this, Burnham stops because he also needs money. Now in the middle of the night, Meg woke up, she had to go to the washroom. After that, when she started going to sleep again, she starts checking the lights of the locker room but after a while, when she opened her eyes again she saw that I did not even turn off the lights of the locker room. As she came to turn off the lights, her eyes fell on the TV and she gets scared to see that the thieves have entered the house. She got scared and quickly came to her daughter, she wakes her up and tells her to stay quiet. Then she told her everything and started taking her away so that they could run away from there. But the grandson of the owner of the house sees him going so he also followed him but now he started using the lift to go down. Meg's daughter tells her that we should go to that locker room, we can be safe there. Meg agreed to this and they come to the third floor but before the thief reaches them they move ahead while placing a chair on the way. The thieves were about to reach them but they quickly went to the room, closed it and locked themselves inside both were very scared and they did not understand what they wanted. Now because they go to the locker room, the grandson of the owner of the house becomes furious. The room where they had to go was in the locker room where the million dollars were lying but Meg did not know about this. Meg then started looking for her phone and remembered that oh god. It is still in the room. That's why she was trying to call with the phone there but that also does not work because till now she had not turned it on from the company. Now the killer had a doubt and says did she call the police? If the police come here, we will all be caught. Burnham says no, this cannot happen because for this he had to get that phone turned on first. For this, she had to call our company because Barnham used to work in the company from which the phone belonged and he knows every nook and corner of this house. Meg gets a button that she could speak in the speaker of the whole house while pressing it. 
She tells the thieves that I have called the police, they will be arriving soon but the grandson of the owner writes, you cannot do this, on the paper and turns towards the camera because the phone is not on. Seeing this, Meg was surprised that how did she come to know? Then she says on the speaker, take it whatever you want and get out of here immediately. On it the grandson of the owner again writes and tells that what we want is in the same locker room so you guys get out of there, we promise that we will not do anything to you. Meg says this can't happen because I don't trust thieves, stay as long as you want, we will not come out. Hearing this, the grandson says to Burnham tell us the way through which we could enter that room. Burnham replies there is no such way except from inside, we can't move inside until someone opens the door from inside. Here, the grandson gets an idea and starts breaking the floor of the room on which the room was made which was its roof. Burnham says you are doing this stupidity, I have seen those rooms and heard about them for years if it would be easy to break them so did people made them in their houses. He was right because when they break the floor, they see a steel wall inside, they try to break it but couldn't. Now they had also heard the sound of breaking and because of it Meg gets panicked but her daughter explains Mom, you do not need to be afraid as long as we are in this room, we are completely safe because it has been designed like this but the grandson of the owner again got a stupid idea. He says we leave poisonous gas in the pipe that goes into that room. This will cause them to be forced to come out due to suffocation. They all agree to this plan and quickly bring the cylinder of poisonous gas then connect its pipe to the pipe of the room. After a while, the gas starts spreading throughout the room but Meg's daughter opens the two bags lying in the room which had a lot of stuff needed with the help of it they could save themselves, she gets two fire jackets. With the help of it, she can escape from the fire. Meg and her daughter wear this jacket. After it Meg sets fire to that pipe with a lighter causing an explosion and the owner's grandson's hand and mouth burns. Along with that, a lot of things had fallen and scattered here and there. Now because of all this, the owner's grandson becomes furious because his whole plan fell on him. He started screaming loudly while losing his control whether I get the money or not but I will not spare you both. Now Meg's daughter started looking for more things from those bags and gets a torchlight. Along with that there was a big pipe in the room and from its hole, the house in front was visible. With the help of that pipe Meg's daughter throws the torchlight towards the house in front hoping that maybe the owner of that house will see us, this happens and the owner of the house wakes up. Seeing this, they started screaming loudly but because of the distance and congested place, he could not hear their voice. He also got this normal light that's why he goes back and sleeps. Seeing this, their hope completely broke and now they feel that maybe we will not be able to go out of here because first of all, those thieves had closed all the doors and windows to go out. On top of that, they sat down here. They will not leave until they get the money. Now through the cameras, Meg found out those thieves had gone down now. That's why she opens the door of this room, which had become a panic room for them and she goes to her room asking her daughter to stay open and started taking her phone but below, those people found out that the door was open. That's why they came up quickly but at the right time, Meg comes back to the room and again closes the door. Now the thieves were quite worried about what she must have taken inside but when the killer sees the charger lying there, he understood that she got the phone and she took it inside. Meg tries to call her husband from her phone, but her call didn't connect then she remembered that the phone here is fine and if I connect her wire to a phone line, the phone will work. That's why she opens the place with the wires and from inside, she takes out the wire of the telephone line and connects it to the phone. After it, she luckily calls her husband and says come quickly with the police because thieves entered the house but in the middle, the call was cut because Burnham found out that she had called so he cut the main line. By now, the landlord's grandson had also given up and says I am going from here because he was in pain because of his burnt face that was being torn and he had to go but before leaving, he says we have more money than 100 here. Hearing this, the killer shoots and kills him so that he does not go out and tell this to anyone else. Seeing this, Meg and her daughter are scared, in the meantime, the doorbell rang whoever was there, they bring him inside. He finds out that this is Meg's husband who did not bring the police along, he thought it was right to come but the poor man made a mistake because as he comes inside, the killer starts beating him. Then he tells Burnham to ask him who he is. Now when Burnham checked his ID, he also found out that this is Meg's husband. Here, the killer's mind was full of greed and blood. That's why he puts Burnham at gunpoint and says take me to that room somehow. Otherwise, I will also kill you with a bullet but Burnham says you can do whatever you want there is no way to go inside, then how can we go? On it the killer says no problem, ok now I have an idea, he brings Meg's husband's ID in front of the camera. Then he also brings it in front and starts beating so that seeing this, they come out. Seeing this, both the mother and daughter were sad, they start weeping being panicked but here another problem came for Meg. Then his daughter started having seizures because she had a disease if her medicine is not given to her, she can die. 
Meg was scared of what to do because her daughter's condition was deteriorating. Then she sees in the camera that Burnham and the killer had a fight. By pulling her, Burnham is taking her down. She thinks that this is the right time, I can bring the medicine. That's why she came to the room by opening the door very cleverly and sees her husband lying on the bed in an injured condition. She quickly goes and picks up the medicine. Before leaving here, she sees the killer in her husband's clothes because they had changed their clothes so that Meg could get stuck in their trap to some extent this happens. Because when Meg was hiding near the locker room, then the killer sees her and says nothing can happen to you now, surrender yourself to us otherwise, we will take your life but here Meg did not care about anything, she just had to save her daughter. That's why she comes in front and pushes him, then runs up to the locker room. But as she reaches near the door of the locker room, she sees Burnham standing and by then the killer had also come from behind. Means now she was stuck, neither could she go ahead nor behind. Meanwhile, the killer picks her up and throws her away, in all this the medicines also fall away from her hand. Taking advantage of this, they go inside the locker room. Meg was left out and had a gun, Burnham started closing the door being feared of Meg that she could shoot but Meg had already thrown her daughter's medicines inside, immediately after it Burnham closes the door but in a hurry, the killer's hand got stuck in the middle of the door, because of this, he was in pain, and asks to open the door, by then Meg had also picked up the gun, Burnham says I can't open the door, Meg has a gun if we open the door, she will shoot us and kill us, hearing this, Meg turns the gun towards the door, she was worried about her son, that's why she says to give medicine to my daughter, I promise, I won't do anything to you but if you don't do this, then you will have to come out, I will not leave you again. Hearing this, Burnham says okay but first you go down. As Meg went down, Burnham opens the door so that the killer can let go of his hand. He releases him and started giving medicine to Meg's daughter and says I also have a daughter like you. But I am doing all this because of some helplessness, I was threatened that if I don't do this they will kill my daughter. That's when the door rang, there was no one here but the police. Before coming here, Meg's husband had called but here Meg hides the truth from them she started saying that everything is fine here, you guys go back. Hearing this, the officer says if you are afraid and saying this because of some pressure then just wink at us. We will understand but she doesn't do anything like that because it was not less than any danger if the police come inside she wants to save her daughter that's why the police leave from here. Bringing them inside, Burnham breaks the safe in which there were the documents of money. From this, it was found that there is not more than 3 million but there is 22 million dollars. They were leaving while taking those documents that's when they meet Meg's husband who had a gun. Burnham was on his target whereas the killer had caught his daughter by making her a prisoner. She also says dad don't do anything to them otherwise they will kill me but his dad says leave my daughter. I will also leave you. Now at that time, Meg hits the killer on the head with a hammer by which he falls down but was still alive whereas after getting a chance Burnham ran out of here. The killer again got up and started coming inside. Seeing this, Meg's husband started shooting at him. Burnham had also heard the sound of bullets, he was worried about his daughter. He thinks that nothing should happen to her in this bullet firing that's why he ran back and came inside. He sees that Meg's daughter is on target and the killer is about to kill her but first, he shoots and kills him like this, he saved that girl's life. He again tells them that I am going from here now there will be no one to trouble you. Saying this, he leaves because the door was closed so to run away, he starts trying to break the wall but then the police come here who had already caught him and surround from all sides. He leaves the documents of 22 million dollars that were in his hands, they fly in all the air and go here and there. Now although he was a good man, he wanted to save people and cared for everyone but now the officers had already caught him because along with being good he was greedy for money. That does not delay in making any good person bad. After it, we see the time after a few days, the mother and daughter were talking comfortably. They start looking for a new house again where there is no place like a locker, panic room or a bunker and they never had to take such a risk. Here concludes this film story.